Hello, I'm Elsa Agnostu. I'm an associate professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and I am a CRI clinical investigator on BR36, which is a ctDNA molecular response adaptive trial of chemoimmunotherapy for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. We certainly need molecularly informed approaches to understand therapeutic response and resistance to immunotherapy. We know that imaging is not just good enough. It doesn't capture the unique timing and nature of response with, with immunotherapy. So we truly need molecularly informed approaches to uh, interpret therapeutic responses. This is where ctDNA comes in as uh, a more accurate and rapid approach to determine response to immunotherapy. With that in mind, and the fact that there are several proof of principle studies uh, showing that ctDNA can accurately and rapidly uh, capture responses with, with, with cancer immunotherapy, we put together BR36 as a ctDNA-informed molecular response adaptive trial of chemoimmunotherapy for patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. BR36 is conducted in two stages, stage one being a validation of the approach stage and stage two being the interventional part of the trial. Now, it was very important for us to put stage one together because there are unanswered questions before we move to an interventional uh, study design. And these are the following. What is ctDNA molecular response? When does it happen? And what is the concordance between ctDNA response and radiographic response? So BR36 stage one was particularly designed and is the first such trial that is particularly designed to answer these questions. Importantly, what we found was that ctDNA molecular responses were more informative than radiographic response in predicting long-term clinical outcomes, progression-free and overall survival. And this is the premise of the, the study performed here, the fact that we are able to, in employing molecularly informed approaches, to better stratify patients within, say, the, home, the very heterogeneous group of patients with radiographically stable disease based on their molecular response and predict long-term outcomes. Having answered the critical questions that we posed in stage one of BR36 in terms of what is molecular response, when does it happen, and how well it uh, compares uh, and agrees with, with radiographic response, we are now moving on to stage two of BR36, which is the interventional stage of the trial, where we are going to be making therapeutic decisions in terms of how to treat patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer based on clearance of or persistence of CTD. DNA. The vision here is that we will be able to implement molecularly informed approaches into clinical decision making going forward. So the potential implications of, uh, of, of this approach is the, our ability to use ctDNA as an early endpoint of response to cancer immunotherapy in general. This is uh, certainly what we showed in, in the metastatic non-small cell lung cancer setting, and the context of the specific assay is applicable to additional, to, uh, to additional settings, and certainly there's also regulatory um, uh, interest in terms of um, uh, implementing ctDNA and ctDNA dynamics and molecular response as an early endpoint point of, uh, of, of immunotherapy response. You can imagine that uh, ctDNA dynamics and ctDNA response can also be used in drug development and inform quick fail uh, decisions uh, and, and be used as a readout of, of, of efficacy of any therapy and inform uh, drug development in that way. It is critically important to perform nuanced genomic analysis to understand the genomic wiring of response and resistance to cancer immunotherapy. Uh, this is critical in informing patient selection strategies to, to better I, to identify patients most likely to respond to cancer immunotherapy. Of course, for a long time, we've been using tumor mutation burden as a prototypic measure of tumor foreignness, but of course we know that tumor mutation burden is challenging and it's an imperfect biomarker of response because of its technical and biological limitations. So what we did and what we presented at AACR uh, this, this, this year was um, uh, a nuanced genomic analysis that looks into uh, the overall tumor mutation burden. And what we discovered was, was there was a, 
a, a subset of mutations within the overall tumor mutation burden that carry differential weights in terms of immunogenicity and um, can mediate sustained anti-tumor immunologic control. These are mutations, we call them persistent. These mutations reside in, in regions of the genome that cannot be lost in the context of chromosomal deletions. These are mutations that reside in haploid regions or in are present in multiple copies in cancer cells, and this makes them difficult to eradicate, uh, if, if, if you will. Putting that in context of our uh, previous work, we had previously shown that acquired resistance to immune checkpoint blockade arises in, in association with mutation and neoantigen deletion. Um, and this is a dominant mechanism of emergence of acquired resistance in, in, in non-small cell lung cancer treated with immunotherapy. So what we did here is we flipped the question and asked the following, if neoantigen loss is a mechanism of acquired resistance, would, um, are there mutations that can actually persist tumor, uh, during tumor evolution and as such continuously tag cancer cells for elimination, if you will. And that's exactly what we, find, what we found in the context of uh, persistent mutations that are, again, mutations that cannot be lost in the context of tumor evolution by chromosomal deletions. And of course, the, the main question is whether persistent mutation content better distinguishes tumors that regress with immunotherapy compared to tumors that don't compared to the overall TMB, and that's exactly what we found. Uh, in every single, we looked at a, a large number of cohorts uh, of immunotherapy-treated patients, and in every single cohort, the content of persistent mutations better differentiated responding tumors from non-responding tumors with, with cancer immunotherapy. So you can imagine that, that these studies and, and these findings can be used to better select patients for cancer immunotherapy. We know, again, that tumor mutation burden is just uh, and the number of sequence alterations and coding sequences is not good enough. It can also be used to inform uh, therapeutic vaccine development strategies as, as we are truly honing in the new antigens that we need to focus on in, in, in order to elicit effective and long-standing anti-tumor immune responses.